I always spill. I'm a mess. Okay. Uh, I think we're live. <laughs> oh, hello. Are we live? <laughs> Howdy, gang. Welcome that's, to... That's not a good vote of confidence. I think, <laughs> I think we're live. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Are we live? <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Eric. Sorry. What is this fail? For once, I didn't cause everything to fall apart. <laughs> well, as you've noticed, Dom is back. Cheers, Yay. gang. Cheers. Where's the camera? Oh, over here. Got yeah, it. Sorry, I just I've been gone for like two weeks, and now everything's like slightly different. It's like when you come home and just I actually don't have a good analogy. When I come home, I don't have any pets or anything that loves me, so everything's the same as it was. <laughs> so. Do you have any pets that don't love you? <laughs> oh, I assume a cat. If I had a cat, yeah, they're kind of indifferent. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah see, care if you came home either. No. Very much a dog person. Yeah. Nonetheless, well, cheers, gang. Look who is, we have with us. This is James. Hey, everybody. James Garcia. <laughs> who are you? Uh, I am the art director on Drifters. Um, nice. I'm sort of the little Dutch boy, so a lot of times I'm just plugging holes here and there, <laughs> you know. As we all are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Eric. Oh, yeah. Even though you screwed it up, you still get a cocktail. You still get... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, gang. Cheers, cheers, cheers to this cheers. week. Now, what we have today is a little bit of audience participation. So I've made this cocktail. This is a nice black and blueberry lemonade. Mm, fresh. That's good. Mm, thank you. Yeah. I think so. And uh, with a bit of whiskey. <laughs> so what we'd like for you to do, generally, right, whenever you're coming up with a craft cocktail, especially for this, we want to gear it towards drifters. Now, you guys have been seeing a little bit of drifters here and there. You're going to see some more in the coming weeks. But my mission to you, should you accept it, that's Mission Impossible. We don't have Mission Impossible in the game. No. But we're doing it anyways. <laughs> my mission to you, should you accept it, is name the cocktail. What fun name would you want to do? I, I want to know. You can see it's like a nice dark red. Actually, maybe you can't see it. There you go. You can see it now. It's a nice dark red. Um, it's rather fruity. Like, like blood. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like blood, exactly. So, we do, have, do we have blood in our universe? The game's teen, so I don't think we do. Do we have blood in no. our universe? Yeah, nothing think, yet. Yeah, no. No. As art director, can you impact that? I will get on it. <laughs> yeah. We'll push I, for that M rating. I think it is, it is a thing, though, right? If it's not red blood, it's usually allowed, green right? Like it's yeah. green blood or something? Well, it was like the whole Mortal Kombat thing, you know, back in the day. They had to change out the blood so it was like, you know, hot pink or, or green or something oh, like that oh, to really? get it past yeah. the sensors, yeah. Even just for it to be out as is. Yeah. Even aside from the fact that it's a mature game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Of course, but now they have people you... like ripping spines out of yeah. bodies. Oh, and, that's fine. You know, bifurcating people. So yeah. that's that's always fine. And of course, you can't see a titty because then. <laughs> <laughs> we have a a, um, a name oh. recommendation: Red Spit. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we're gonna go with that one, but it doesn't. That's a that's a hard pass. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't make me want to continue drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So close. It'll be something like the bearded so beard or salmon related. Oh, that'll it, probably be true. Eventually. Yeah. Also, hi Star Wolf. Thanks for welcoming back. And look, who who has a little cor corgi? That's serious. Oh, I feel that's like Jimmy. Jimmy. Oh, like that corgi. <laughs> I like that corgi. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so James, you said you're art director here, mm -hmm. and you plug many holes. What other roles? That didn't sound right. <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't have. This is starting out My great. fault. It's my fault. <laughs> For all HR-related issues, uh, Real quick, blood, blood Fox. So it was a, a fresh black and blueberry lemonade and then some whiskey. Yes. So really simple, really straightforward, but it's really nice. Um, so what what roles does that encompass? You overseeing everyone and telling them what to do? Yes. I'm sure there's more to it. Or is it just that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So... A little bit of backstory. I my um, sort of area of specialty is environment art, so I don't have a traditional art background. A lot of art directors come in and they, you know, are concept artists first, and then you know, art director second. Um, so I have a little bit more of a technical background. So um, I lean a little bit more heavily on our concept artists, and you know, so we'll have a little bit of that to look at later. Right. Um, but where where I really enjoy uh, working is sort of in the technical area. So trying to figure out how to make the game run best, how to build levels, how to um, author things so they're performant, and mm -hmm. you know um, try to push the the game engine so it does you know things that people haven't seen before. And you know I think a lot of people really underestimate, at least on our stream, what they maybe don't understand whenever you say like technical art and making things performant. 
Can you go into just a tiny bit of detail? We've talked about that with different people in the past, mm -hmm. what it means maybe to like optimize art or make, again, the art performant. But like there really is a huge technical part that I think a lot of people on the outside of the industry don't understand. Yeah. Right? Like there's yeah. a real talent to having good artists. And especially in a day and age where like, you know, we're in our industry, we're very used to outsourcing to other countries. But there's something that like, you know, like with proper training and like, you know, a lot of management, right? Something that you specialize in. What does it mean to really make performant art, to make art that's like, I guess, as you would say, affordable for a game? Yeah. Well, so art for game development, I mean, it's kind of three components. There's the visual component, and that's, you know, just how it looks. And if it's pretty versus not pretty, I mean, you know, you get games like Dark Souls, which I'm probably going to get hate mail for this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Dark Souls was not a very attractive game, but it was oh. very well received, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so there's the visual component of it. There's the execution component because you can draw a pretty picture, but if you can't translate that into 3D, mm -hmm. you know, uh, then you kind of failed your mission there. You yeah. Know? Um, but then there there is the performance element. Um, executing is is one thing, um, but making sure that the poly counts are, are you know low enough that it you have enough there to represent what you want, but it's not like overkill. Mm -hmm. Making sure the textures are are the right size and the right level of detail. Um, a lot of times I come in at the point where we're um, talking about shader complexity and things like that. Um, how to get what we need with, from the shaders with the least amount of, of instructions possible. Mm. Um, you know, we, we have these really incredibly, we call them spaghetti shaders. Um, because when you look at them, this, it's this big image of little boxes attached with little wires. And they run from here to here to there to there. You know, eventually it just looks like spaghetti. someone threw spaghetti at the screen. <laughs> and uh, a big part of my job is, is, is removing spaghetti from my screen. Oh, nice. um, but yeah, essentially what that all boils down to is instructions. And those instructions are something the computer has to do, or the console or whatever, has to do to render um, uh, that shader. Mm. And so the, the lower the number of, sh of instructions, the more performant that shader is going to be. Yeah. And that's just a little small example. I mean, you know, when we t really get into the nuts and bolts of performance, we're talking about draw calls and, um, yeah. you know, the number of points that could be rendered to the screen and occlusion versus streaming. And, you know, there's all kinds of Absolutely. Uh, but no, and I appreciate the brief. And, and I appreciate it just because, again, I think we have a lot of viewers that are maybe at the start of their career. They're looking how to break in. And so, like, you know, I think those are, this is something that, like, we gloss over as a mere detail of what you do, but in fact, it is incredibly involved. Yeah. So yeah. I appreciate the. Yeah, the, we look at these roles. Well, like I was saying with Brian last week, you know, with the animator, a lot of people just think, oh, you make things move. Yeah. There's, like, so obviously so much more technical, fine detailing of, of things that yeah. go into any job. Yep. So, um, did you, so did you go to school for environment? Art? No, I actually went to school for animation, like like film animation. Mm. Um, like Pixar, like make the lamp do the thingy. Two D, actually. Oh, wow. yeah. Um, so Eric, did you I... see the volume thing? Someone said the volume's a little low. On on the chat, someone says the volume's. Oh, you're fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm back. Um, so yeah, I went to school um, back before really you know game development programs were a mm. thing. Um, you don't look that old. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You mean the bald spot and the gray hair is not a not a dead giveaway? I didn't think so. I well, don't thank think you. So either. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I went to school when there weren't any real programs for that. Um, I always really wanted to get into game development, but it was just you know the the programs weren't available. Mm -hmm. um, did a lot of learning out out of school, you know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it took me a while to get into the industry, just doing odds and ends and. Uh, contract work and things like that. Mm. Um, yeah. So similar again, like in very non-traditional, well, I shouldn't say non-traditional, unexpected way of getting in. Like yeah. In terms of like, you didn't go to a directed program for it. You kind of just like did what you could to like force yourself in in a way. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I did lots of uh, really anything I could to get art experience at initially was just it, literally anything. I mean, anything from websites. I worked for a Children's rug company for a while. Children's rug company? Yeah. Like those There's train a... rug? Yeah. Rug oh, yeah. You like, want to talk a about a special children? circle just... of hell for art. That's that's <laughs> it right there. Um, I don't know, man. Those those traffic rugs are pretty iconic. They're, yeah. They are. Yeah. Every, but really, how many times them? do they need to be redesigned? That's right? a fair that's point. True. That's true. That's a fair I'm point. I'm pretty sure most of them are the same since you, like you, <laughs> Yeah, you do it once and you're fine. Yeah. Um, got my first studio job. I ended up driving like 100 miles one way just <gasps> so I could get experience, you know. Um, oh, no. Yeah. 
um, at a little studio named uh, uh, Left Field Productions. Mm. And so they did like old sports games and things like that, oh, you know. Okay. But uh, Are you into sports? Do you like sports? Mm, well, <laughs> uh, go sports team. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. yeah I'll, I'll enjoy it. We're all on the same page. Yeah, I'll enjoy it with a group, but I'm not rooting for any particular team. Same. Yeah. Well, but that leads to a great question. You're talking about what games you worked on. Um, what, what are some of the favorite games you worked on? Without naming ones that we're not allowed to name. Correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, probably the, the most well-known game I've worked on was Fallout New Vegas. Mm. Um, I was a lead environment artist on that one. Um, that's probably the game that I had the biggest impact overall. Mm. You know, because we had this big, massive world. And I mean, in a lot of ways, we had just this really sort of like, hey, we want this to be McCarran Airport from the 1950s. And that was the only wow. design input we got on it. Um, because really, our designers were more like mission designers. You know, they weren't really designing the combat spaces and things like that. And mm -hmm. so okay. that was a really uh, fun opportunity to get plugged in to pretty much every area of, of game development mm. on that one um, and have an opportunity to really have a big impact. Um, it's also where I really sort of found that I have a, a passion for leadership. Um, you, you don't hear of a lot of artists that like, yes, I really want to be a leader. Like they right. want the authority maybe or they want the yeah. you know um the recognition the, the recognition <laughs> yeah but the um the ego boost yeah <laughs> yeah but the the aspect of growing teams and developing artists like that's really fun you know we had so many uh junior and intern level people that came in on that team and i was able to work with them and grow them into you know moving on and becoming mids and seniors oh was, very cool yeah. and i think i mean that is such a great true sign of like good leadership is like knowing that's the reward yeah. in of itself versus like recognition of like, look at what I did. Well, yeah, making yeah. sure the people under you succeed yep. is actually the bigger sign of oh, totally. of, uh, of being successful yeah. in your role. I think so too. Um, that's great. I mean, yeah, I think that's a, that's a really big title and that's a huge, yeah, that one stands out for sure. And I know that's why a lot of people, in fact, like Obsidian just for that game alone. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that was a big one. For sure, like, and it's still like, I know even when I was in grad school, like we were still working in that engine actually, and specifically the New Vegas one. Yeah. Like with all those updates and stuff. So I didn't realize I've seen your art before and worked around it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really crazy. Yeah, That's it's cool. it's kind of cool how big an impact that's had on the on the industry. Um, every once in a while, just going on like Kotaku or mm -hmm. you know uh, Polygon or something like that, and seeing oh people are still modding that. It's it's just kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially because. People have turned the game into something. It's like, like wow, that is so completely different than what it was. Yeah, you know, like changing the ending, making it so you can continue to play afterwards. Right. And, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big title. So transitioning to like what we're working on now with Drifters. Yeah. Um, I think you know, like obviously, like this is um, you know a project where your art director. So right now, Sorry. I'm just saying the image oh, yeah. right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just a base question, how would you describe the art style for Drifters? You know, it's kind of an interesting question because because of the way that Drifters has been developed up to this point, the art style has been sort of in flux. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the very earliest days, it was just this really simple polygonal, you know, low poly yeah. uh, look. I remember those and, days. Um, as we started pushing more towards the, the 5v5 arcade shooter style, we started developing images like the one you're seeing, where um, this is basically just a mood board. It's not representational of, of what the final game is going to be. Oh, sorry. It's, now you're seeing it, yes. Yeah. Um, it's not representational of what the, the final game is going to look like, but mm -hmm. it does inform you know art discussions and, and the approach we might take to later areas of development. Um, we also have a color version of that same image, and that adds a little bit more um, life oh. and energy and atmosphere to wow. it, you know. Um, but again, still not representational. Um, and even today, like we're we're still trying to identify exactly what that art is going to look like. So the because my question was going to be when you you know start talking about an art style, is it you know detailed out like this is what we want it to look like or do you start with more like the game design in general and then it starts organically the art style starts organically forming around the you know general idea of the piece or do they come and say we want it to look like this yeah well generally you want the art style to complement the gameplay right, right. Um, 
you know, perfect example, you know, where we do these pitches where it's very, very high level, you know, hey, we want a survival shooter in the medieval times, you know, and... Um, <laughs> classic. Uh, classic, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> To, and so, our next game right yeah. there. <laughs> and so, obviously, that might have a very serious tone. Um, but then you do have the outliers like Team Fortress Two, where you know their original art style was really heavily militaristic, and it was super un- right. iconic. Yeah. You know, and then they said, "No, we're going to make it cartoony," and everybody thought that was going to be a huge failure uh, for Valve, and it ended up being wildly successful. Mm. You know, and that's sort of the the grandfather of all these amazing stylized shooters that we yeah. have now. Um, so generally though, yeah, you do want the art style to complement gameplay. So once you have an idea at least about what the gameplay is going to be, then you start pulling reference for, you know, from different sources of artwork, other games, you know. Um, what you do, some, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, well, I was going to ask what were some of the inspirations for Drifters, like stuff that were... Um, you know, one of the things we, we really didn't want to do is we didn't want to make Overwatch, you know. Um, I think Blizzard's very big. <laughs> and they have a lot of it's talent on that team. It's a losing try, battle for sure. And, uh, and, take that on. and you know that's crowded more a more crowded area of the market where you have Fortnite and you have uh, Battleborn and you know some of these games that are still around and some of them that aren't anymore. Yeah. You know that have have gone and, mm-hmm. and, and succeeded or failed. But um, ultimately they they're all in that same sort of wheelhouse of very mm-hmm. cartoony stylized you know um, games. And so that's that's sort of what we have now but that's not the the end goal for art you know on drifters so um we're definitely taking steps right now to move away from that area of of, uh how the game looks and is that something like do you only look to other video games you take inspiration from Um, no absolutely not um i mean you know we're, we're visual people and you know I could name name ten or fifteen, you know, different things that have been impactful in my life that I would pull reference from. Mm-hmm. I mean, not the least of which would be comic books or movies or something like that. And so, really, it's just thinking about like, well, I want to make this thing that looks really dark and moody and foreboding. And so, I might start looking at, you know, like Ridley Scott films, or I might mm. start looking at, you know, uh, H.R. Geiger artwork uh, yeah. or something like that, or um, uh, uh, Giger. Giger, excuse Is me. Is it really? Um, did not know that. Or, or like looking at you know really dark uh, gothic artwork like Hieronymus Bosch or something like right. that. Like some you can pull from anywhere, but ultimately you're just developing these mood boards of this is sort of the area of art I want to look at. Mm. Um, but it also has to be paired with sort of like a market analysis. You know, I mentioned uh, Overwatch and you know Fortnite and all these other games, and if you kind of look at it like There's a different quadrants, yeah. you know, that quadrant of of art is very very. Uh, dense with right. competition yeah. and you want to stand out from the crowd if you don't then you're kind of dead on launch unless you've got a huge community following and backing mm-hmm. so you want to stand out enough that it's still visually appealing but also unique mm-hmm. and so you're kind of looking at your reference material your market analysis and you're trying to find something that will hit both of those you know um, yeah do we have um, we had some other stuff because we were going to talk about kind of the you know the evolution of uh, the art style or just the actual art process in yeah. general. Yeah. So uh, I put together a few images to go over. Um, uh, I hope well, I put them in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is this is an example of what we call a beautiful corner. Um, essentially, once we've developed this sort of mood board um, idea, which was the previous image that you saw. Um, we start to look at a more practical um, example of what the artwork's going to look like. So, um, you know, this is a concept artist going through saying, you know, if we were to actually put some of these established artistic rules to practice, what would a structured environment look like? You know, um, again, not terribly representational of what the final product would look like. Um, we have a, another uh, uh, version applying some of the more lighting rules and things like that. Um, yeah, uh, Star Wolf, we were actually trying to go for sort of like a comic book feel with a lot of these. Um, and, uh, you know, that's actually sort of the direction we're trying to pull the visuals back into is, is a, a little bit more um, stylized comic book feel. Right. Um, but then once we get something that's a little more final like that, we start looking to develop the area in 3D. And it starts out, if you go to the next image. Um, oh. Uh, oh, sorry. 
Then we also add, ask for some block outs, uh, call outs from concept art so that we have uh, a more refined concept to um, define what structures might look like. Mm. Um, but once we have all those things from concept art, we start developing uh, the area in 3D. It starts out as a really rough block. That's the next one. There we go. Yeah. Um, so this is finally in game. Yeah. So this is uh, in engine in Unreal 4. Um, and you know, not all the pieces are there, but it's starting to represent scale and, and yeah. you know, um, how we want to represent certain shapes and, and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, at this point, we're also trying to define things like bevels and how light's interacting with surfaces. So it's a, it's a surprisingly technical process to make art. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as it turns out. Yeah. Not, not, not the easiest. It's not just a sitting and, and, and I feel though. like, and that's exactly it, right? Like seeing the concept from before this, like you can see that building matches. But I feel like, you know, like just going from those previous pictures and looking at this, like, well, it looks like garbage. It doesn't, look, it doesn't have all the color. It doesn't have all the, like, nice well, accents. And then I think if right? you go on, it's going to keep developing. Right. But my point mm -hmm. is just, like, again, I think, you know, like, it's such an interesting, like, even just seeing the, like, small texture differences, right? Like, how mm -hmm. it looks worn and old and, like, just, like, yeah, you know. It's like it looks, it's new. Yeah, yeah. It looks <laughs> brand new and new. And then, boom. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then it starts interacting with light in different ways, and you can kind of start mm. seeing um, metal express itself and, you know, uh, different types of materials, glass and things like that. Um, and, and the aspect of color and material complexity really helps out quite a bit. And it's such an interesting thing, like being an engineer, like not having that vision for what this could look like. Like I'm always impressed, like I love miniatures. Mm -hmm. mm. And like, of course, I really only got into them really with the Star Wars miniatures game. But nonetheless, and like seeing the little guys that come out like perfectly, you know, shaped and everything. And then like seeing people like apply just like painting to like get them to look like worn and like, you know, even paint the little terrain and they're in some like intense like desert tundra because they decide to add all these little details. And I'm like, what the shit? Like, I don't even have the vision <laughs> for that, let alone the ability to like actually like, you know, like show that kind of like characteristic of like, obviously this trooper has been through hell and back. Oh, yeah. Of the way they've been painted. Basically. Well, and, and respect for anybody who does that because I need an undo button. I can't, <laughs> I can't do anything with physical media to save my life. <laughs> um, I think I'd be the same way. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple more progression images of this particular uh, environment. So see. this is oh, getting wow. more yeah, final. Look at this. See, a few yeah. more wars. Yeah, yeah. Just, like yeah. some paint spilled on it. Yeah. Yeah. A couple accidents. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the things that we'll typically do is we'll build all the structural stuff, which is you know what we've seen up to this point, and then we start layering on um, these different tile set or tile uh, uh, kit pieces. Mm -hmm. So like pipes, um, different oh, wall okay. structures. Like on um, the top left there, sort of. Yeah, yeah uh, light fixtures, things like that. We never build one-off pieces, you know, unless unless we absolutely have to. And by one-off, do you mean like you would like you don't build a building? What do you mean by one-off? So like a one-off piece would basically be you know one piece of work that you're never going to be able to use again. Like oh. I could use those pipes in 50 different places oh. with different combinations because oh, so they're built 90 degree pieces. angles, T angles, mm -hmm. or, uh, T joints, you know, straight pieces, things like that. But like the structure itself, I may not only be able to use once. So a right. lot of this stuff, like with traditional, you know, 2D, it, like the old cell work and stuff, is it, does it work kind of like that where you're just taking, you have a whole library of pieces that you can just kind of lay on mm -hmm. to yeah. different... Uh, backgrounds and stuff like that. And it has a... It has you a... know in art. Yeah, I used to watch a lot of like the old Disney animator stuff. I used to draw all the time and my mom's an artist. I just fell out of it. Like there's stuff my mom all look through. She's like, oh, look at this I found. I'm like, oh, is that a drawing for work? I'm like, no. She's like, no, you did that when you were 10. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had no idea where that went. I stopped drawing and I lost it completely. I used to be awesome. But I used to watch like all the um, like Disney animator like docs and stuff like that. Um, and just be in awe of yeah how fast they can go and but yeah seeing all the cell animation and stuff like that so yeah. it's just interesting because this always seems so different to me but I'm seeing a lot more parallels than I thought there were between the 3D and 2D yeah I mean world. ultimately it's all about composition and you know one of the things you're not really seeing um, here is that when you take the lighting out it's it's very flat and boring, you know. I mean, you could put one light in, and it, it's just this very sterile environment. When you start layering light and color with the lights in, it starts to feel a certain way, mm. you know. So you could make it feel very um, scary or very happy and welcoming, you know. Um, 
So that's that's sort of that extra layer there. They usually call it like sculpting with light. You know? So is that like an actual function in a program, or is it like traditional where you're actually painting on the light? Oh no, you you actually place the the light emitters. You so know, so it's like um, you have an actual light mm -hmm. and put shining light on it. Yeah, and uh, that's that's a big factor in how the characters interact and stand out from the environment as well. Um, but sort of what you were talking about with the the different like pieces that you can place on that has a big component of um, optimizing the level too. Huh. Um, if you were to make uh, unique pieces for everything in the environment, you're basically never able to instance. Um, it, it's basically like placing a point and says this thing is here at some point, but you don't always have to draw it. So it's it's basically loading it one time into memory and never again. Versus having to load every unique thing over and over right. again, it's mm -hmm. just you know taxing on the system. So um, I think Nifty. there might be one more image of this one. Okay, oh, no, and so this is the the final inversion game um, that we have right now. Um, Looks a little different. A little bit different, yeah. Um, you know, obviously the colors have changed quite a bit. We've we've started uh, changing how we're expressing uh, metalware and things like that. So even this is a little bit outdated from from what we're doing now. Oh wow. Um, but uh, what's kind of exciting is we actually just recently had a uh, concept artist start, um, a lead concept artist start that uh, is helping us to, to drive our art in a particular direction. Um, and so he, <laughs> he, was, he started last Monday um, and had been working on a piece before he started because he's so excited to be working on it. <laughs> um, which is so awesome. Yeah. This guy's you know, list of credits is pretty insane. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's the next image that we have. Um, you can see he's he's taking uh, uh, the Exiles Return, the, yeah. the bar that the uh, Exiles hang out at. He's taking that and he's pushing it in a little bit more sort of stylized, uh, yeah. what we call wonky direction, where there's <laughs> not as many straight lines and there's a little bit more life and, yeah. and, uh, and liveliness to it. So you it, can see there's like bikes there and there's yeah. you know some different signage. It looks and, more lived in. Yeah. It does, and it looks like it's more down like an alley. Like it's yeah. a little bit more closed off. Like I would never go like... there. <laughs> <laughs> to be very clear. I wouldn't walk down that alley. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. And, and what's great about having, uh, it's, his name is Jeff Merghart, and mm -hmm. uh, he was kind enough to, to supply us some of his images. But um, before we move on to those, um, what's kind of cool about having guys like Jeff come on is, you know, um, the team here, has been working on this game for quite a while, off and on, you know. Right. Um, and it's hard. You 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 don't when your eyes not fresh to see what's wrong with the picture. Mm. Oh yeah, you, you know? get used to like as a writer, like that's one of the rules. Like you write something, you finish it, you put it in a drawer, you walk away for months, and then yeah. you come back to it, and then and you're, you're like, like, Good oh, lord, there's all <laughs> this shit that's wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, is this is this something that takes like on a lot of projects, does this happen? Like, I mean, I know ours is a little different in the sense that we've been kind of working on it off and on. Mm -hmm. But in general, for a lot of projects, does there is there as large of an evolution for like, you know, starting off, you know, as you mentioned, right, we used to be polygonal. Yeah. Literally. Like, literally. I don't know if you guys <laughs> understand that. They were literal polygons. That just, that was the art style. And it was great for the small game that it was, but we wanted to make it a game that mm -hmm. was much larger. So we switched. But then, like, even saying starting on that, past the polygonal stage, yeah. going to where we are now. Well, that's not to say it never happens. I mean, you mentioned Team Fortress 2 mm -hmm. you know, before. Um, Borderlands is an is a infamous example of that. Like, they scrapped their entire art style and went to the sort of hand-painted, you know, right. inked uh, style with something like eight months left of development. Whoa. So that was a rapid <laughs> oh change, gosh. you know. Um, but, uh, you know, again, one of, the, one of the things we've kind of been contending with is that inconsistent dev time. You know, um, where we've built pieces and then we've had to take a break and then we've built more pieces and then, you know, um, and then, you know, art directors have been on and off. And so it's been a little hard to have consistent art direction on this. Um, so it's it's nice to be able to say that we're really now finalizing what that art's going to look like, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, to those of you who might be fans of, what the art looks like now, it's not going to be a change that's going to be like Borderlands or Team Fortress 2. Right. You know, it's not going to be night and day. Right, right, right. Um, it's going to mean things are going to feel more interconnected and more cohesive. Nice. 
and things will have a little bit more personality like this concept here. Um, really just making the world itself feel more lived in and more... Some more of the details. Yeah. And the, yeah, it's just putting a very distinct style on it. Like yeah. we already had a distinct style, but now it's definitely putting it's on even more defined. final, you know, yeah. style, yeah. flair. And, and it's all about pushing us further away from the competition, you know, so we will right. stand, on, uh, stand out in that market. Too. Right. Nice. So. And so, um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, well... Is there ever a game that looks like it did from concept conceptualization, like on ship date? Like, is there ever? Do, I'm pretty sure do Mario all... found their <laughs> niche and they stuck with it. Um, you know, unless it's a sequel, I feel like a lot of times games they never look quite like they, mm. they did when We're... they started out. You know, right? Um, sequels are kind of they're locked into that that visual style, but even like. Uh, Gosh, what was that game? God of War. The Darkness. So close. The <laughs> God of War, yes. That's a good example. Um, but I, specifically The Darkness. Like the first game, it was kind of low budget looking by, by you know, even that day's standard. Mm -hmm. um, and for, for the amount of style that the comic books had, they, they didn't have a lot of that style versus mm -hmm. the second one came out. Um, and it was almost like night and day. You know, like the level of quality and the amount of style and expression they got from the characters was, was pretty significant. Mm -hmm. So um, it does happen, but yeah, with the exception of, of uh, sequels, I think a lot of times the art evolves from, you the know, beginning. even even as late as like vertical slice, like where we have it, um, yeah. you know. We had uh, Del says that original God of War changed a lot. Yeah. Oh, really? I'm not, I guess I'm not surprised. Like, I mean, he's a God of War. I kind of like where they ended up at. <laughs> it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty badass. I, and yeah, and I being both Star Wars fans, I mean, yes. obviously from Macquarie to actual production. Oh, yeah. Insane. Oh, insane yeah. difference. Which is kind of cool. I don't know if you've seen it, but there was a um, uh, uh, film school project where someone took the original Ralph Macquarie designs mm -hmm. and did like this Star Wars trailer with what? them. It's really cool. Really? Like fleshed it all out in 3D and did all the sets and everything. I mean, that's awesome. For a film student project, it's really high. Uh, quality. Yeah. Yeah. So that guy got snatched up, probably. I, I hope so. <laughs> if he's having a hard time working, we're all in trouble. <laughs> yeah. That's super cool, though. I mean, because yeah. it really is like when you look at those concept arts from for Star Wars, it's insane. It right. looks so different from oh, the yeah. modern. Oh yeah. From from what we know and love today, it yeah. just looks way different. And it's super cool because you can see the inspiration. Mm -hmm. But it's clearly, I mean, to me, it was almost equivalent at looking at with what did we decide on Giger? Giger. Giger. Giger, yeah. That's wrong. That's just, that's not right. <laughs> but it's like, it's looking at that and just seeing like, whoa, this ended up like way different. Yeah. Because like, I mean, I think Giger was on point for obviously what we saw in Alien, but like still it like... It's much less phallic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, but it was just, it, it's just so cool seeing that original stuff and then just seeing the end product. And so, yeah, it'd be, it'd be very interesting to see, you know, games we know and love today. Like, the concept, yeah. the, what the concept art looked like. I know for me, like my favorite game is is Red Alert Two, which is a, a alternate universe where the Soviet Union is still alive in like the nineties and early two thousands. Oh, okay. And so I'd love to see what the concept art was like. Yeah, let's just make everything Soviet Union and just like see all the like <laughs> gulags and who knows what of like <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I just like to see that. I think it's great. Yeah. Mm. Um, what do we got next? So What's we have, on? no, we were going to talk a little bit about, or we talked about our concept artist, mm -hmm. yeah. um, Jeff Merghart. Is that how, I'm, am I pronouncing yeah. that right? I'd never, I I've so, only, that's how I've been pronouncing I've only it. seen it, and this is the first time I've said it out loud. Um, so I think we have some images. He's, he's, he's kind of awesome. Yeah, so Jeff's been around this the is industry. Him. That's him. <laughs> is that, are you saying in that's the, a self-portrait? In, in the stripes. Oh, yeah. The green stripes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, but yeah, Jeff's been around the industry for a long time. Um, so he started out uh, in the game industry working on Mark of Cree, um, which we have uh, a concept in there. I'm not sure where it is, but you can, yeah, go ahead. There, there. we go. So he started out with Mark of Cree, uh, I think, on the PlayStation 2. Um, and it was really beautifully stylized. Um, you know, the game wasn't super well received, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of art style, it was it was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard that um, it was well very illustration based. Like mm -hmm. all of the 
the intros would be like drawn mm -hmm. in and I Hayden was telling me a story Jeff told him like him having to like do those in real yeah. time like as yeah. they were um, he he actually shared that during his interview where he mm. had to um, draw them perfectly every time and every stroke had to be really intentional and purposeful because the way that they recorded it um, in order to be able to tell the story as he was drawing it it had to be very like okay I'm going to plan out every stroke which is normally you're just like Right. You know, <laughs> you get it done as it comes to you in your head. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that that's that must have been really frustrating. <laughs> and we have a couple people that played it. Mike's played it. He likes it. Yeah. Oh, Eric's Eric. Eric. Yeah. Eric that. was all know. excited. I remember when we were interviewing Jeff, and yeah. he messaged me. He's like, "Mark of Cree." <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of the other games that uh, Jeff worked on was uh, uh, Wild Star with Carbine. Mm. Um, and that was. I think if you go yeah, back. Go ahead. So I believe that's Carbine and that's Carbine. That's from Wildstar, I think right. so. Yeah, mm. sorry, Wildstar. Um, and uh, that was really what attracted us to his portfolio, actually, is, is this really cool, heavily stylized, very comic book-inspired artwork that he had done. Mm. Um, because one of the other uh, really awesome things about Jeff is he's also uh, like a fairly tenured Disney artist, like mm -hmm. Disney concept artist. Um, most Hence that first picture, right? Yeah. Yeah. Most if you go recently, back to the first one, uh, he worked on on Wreck It Ralph too, and he, the amount of work he did is staggering. Like this is this is not even one one thousandth of, of if, the work that he has on his wow. portfolio. If you yeah. go on to, he has an art station. Mm -hmm. when you look up uh, Jeff Merghardt on Art Station. You'll see like these tons of like folders mm -hmm. of the Ralph Breaks the Internet wor artwork. And yeah, it's a lot. It seems like it was a lot of the villains. I haven't seen it. So it looked like a lot of more a villain character. Oh, it's stuff. like everything. You know, yeah. um, was it um, Knows It or Know It All or... I don't remember the names. Guy. Yeah. Um, but... And then the... Um, I forget yeah, I the guy's it, name, so. but there, one of the characters had this like... Oh, I'm hitting the mic. Sorry. I had this like growth, like his little brother was growing off of him. Yeah. And I didn't even see those. He, he, he was basically saying like, yeah, we're going to pitch the grossest character we possibly can and just try to get it past him. And <laughs> that was what got approved. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, but, try and uh, get past the Disney censors. Yeah. But uh, if you're if you're a fan of quality concept art, Jeff's Jeff's art station is, is really, really yeah. remarkable. Um, and so even just the stuff that he's done, um, if you, you scroll uh, a little further. I'm not sure which that one was from. I don't I'm think that's sure. Wildstar. No? It, I, don't, I don't think so. I could no. be wrong, honestly. Just a, just a cool... Because I know he wrote... Well, we were talking about he did some of the Clone Wars game. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, the game or the movie? The, the game. game. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Um, the next one, yeah. So some of his Disney mm -hmm. uh, She's looking like a studies badass. from uh, yeah. from Sleeping Beauty. She doesn't fight in the movie, right? I wonder what this no. is from. Uh, I want to say he did some stuff for Disney Infinity as well. Oh, so shit. maybe they were gonna do a a, a Briar Rose. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the last images should be of uh, yeah. So uh, this is for our character Sumo, and he's he's been doing. Oh look, um, he's eating me. Yeah, look at Tom. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, now he's got James's head. Oh dear. Uh, but you know, we, we've we've really been enjoying his take on the characters and how he's trying to push personality a little bit more. Yeah. You know, uh, a big topic of discussion is you know we're a character-based shooter, um, and the characters they all feel a little bit too different. Like, you know, different in a good way because they're, you know, snipers and tanks yeah. and things like that, but different in a bad way in that they don't quite feel like they're all from the same, same universe. Yeah. Same style. So um, we're, we're really uh, leaning heavily on Jeff to give us that cohesiveness and the character style as well. Yeah. And so you can see some of his notes where he's talking about, you know, uh, wanting to make the eyes, you know, bigger and more friendly, you know. Yeah, that uh, one where he's smiling, I love. I I know. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I could see... Uh, Jeff Goodman voicing him. Yeah. Or John Goodman. I don't want to yeah. say Jeff. Sorry. Because um, Jeff Murgut. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Oh, that might be what Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that would be <laughs> Jeff Goldblum would be like the complete opposite yeah. voice of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, John but, Goodman would be a good one, though. See, right? I always heard um, like Ron Perlman oh. like, would be a good voice. Well, and see, this is what I think is so great talking about his art, though. Like, I feel like already just within these few like pictures, I don't know, I feel bad, I don't know what you would call this, but like these Con images. Concept pieces. Yeah, concept yeah, pieces. There you go. You get such a more defined sense of personality. Mm -hmm. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Adele wants a shirt with the sumo skull on it. I agree. I like we that We should a lot. definitely make it. Because, like, I didn't know this was part of his skull. His little thingies. Yeah. Out of his... Out of his... Not beard. I don't know what you call that. <laughs> You've got beard on the brain. Yeah. yeah. Right. Out of his chin? The chin. There we go. <laughs> and it's right. That's, that's, what's, what, that's what's underneath under. the beard. <laughs> I know... You, you probably didn't know there's something under... Ah. <laughs> that's what we women have. Chins. <laughs> Good to know. I'll jot that down. <laughs> um, no, I absolutely love his his art style, and I can't yeah. wait to see. Um, so, is he doing this for like all the characters? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's gonna be great. Yeah, we actually just had a discussion um, yesterday about sort of what we wanted to change and adjust for each character. Mm. And so, you know, in the coming weeks, we're gonna start to see um, you know final concept pieces on, on where we're going with. The characters like the, the next iteration on these characters and um trying to push a little more personality trying to push a little more um silhouette uniqueness because that's actually something that factors really heavily into um games like oh, like totally. drifters you know um you want to make sure that characters are recognizable at a distance because at a distance essentially all they are is color and silhouette right you know and some some of the characters they right now feel a little bit too similar similar you know, um, they, they homogenize with the background, so we're trying to push the characters out a little bit too. Yeah. And so um, that's a lot of what we're doing now, is we're just trying to take the game and push it beyond uh, that sort of 75-80% quality and get a representational 90-100% to quality. Mm. And, and that'll drive really what, what's left to do for the rest of the levels and characters. Nice. Yeah, I'm so excited to see this. And so it's mainly right now you guys are working on characters that have already been established. Are there any plans to start to develop some new characters? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, so what we're trying to do right now is just make sure that the everything from concept to completion, all of the animations, everything's very spelled out. Um, you know, at this point we have to have these really precise metrics so that we establish our budget and our, our timelines and everything like that. It's this all very clinical thing that I'm very glad that I don't have to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then uh, once we have all that squared away, then we'll be able to start on the additional characters that we want to launch with. Uh, Jeff's already working on concept art for another character. And, oh, cool. Um, I won't, won't give anything away, but it's, it's pretty awesome. Coming soon. Yeah. Oh, excited. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I said that, but I have no clue. <laughs> Coming soon? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> um, so, let's see. How much time? Got about 15 minutes. Um, so, I was going to ask, since you're, you know, good at, you mentor a lot of people and mm. as an art director, what advice would you give to people wanting to break into the industry or move up in their, you know, position as an artist? What do you think is... You know, what advice would you give them? Well, first of all, I would really say that you have to be really thoughtful about whether, whether it's something you really want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I and not to be a downer, <laughs> but game development is uh, is not going to make bank. No. You know, and it's not always going to be the most stable thing. I mean, also no. Um, I've been very fortunate in my career. I've never been laid off. Um, mm -hmm. I've always sort of ridden the wave. You know, and and have jump ship right before things have gotten <laughs> you really bad. You saw the writing on the wall. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> um, but you know, a lot of my 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 best friends in the industry haven't been so lucky, and some mm. of them it's like a, a constant roll of, of of layoffs and you know projects end and things like that. So if that sounds like something you want to tolerate for your love and um, appreciation for game art, then you know, awesome, you passed the first gate. <laughs> Uh, beyond that, um, you know, obviously playing games is huge, and I don't just mean that because, yeah, you've got to be passionate about it, but you have to understand game art, you know, um, and the best way to do that is, is consuming the, the, the medium that you're trying to get into. Um, that's, I think it's, it's so frustrating when you, you have interview candidates and you ask them, what, what's the, what, what are you playing right now? 
and the most recent game they can they can enumerate is something from like Super Nintendo, Ugh. you know, or like PlayStation. Duck you Hunt. Know, Duck Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, great games, but I, you know, completely non-representational of, of the current generation of games and, and what we can do with our technology. Um, I think there's a lot of really solid people out there that um, are great sculptors, like ZBrush sculpting, or they're great modelers. But if you don't know how to translate that into a game engine, then you know the battle's half lost. Right. So really getting into a game engine. I would highly recommend Unreal 4. Um, it's super easy to get into, and um, there are a million tutorials out there. Hmm. You know, um, Most of my career, it was YouTube University, honestly. <laughs> um, and so uh, if, you're, if you're looking to try and get into a, to game development, like that's the best engine and that's your best resource is, is, is just the community that supports it. Mm. What would you say is the biggest difference between game animation and like a film animation, cartoon type? Um, so when you develop art for film, like say like Pixar or something like that, you're always developing for the shot. So you never really have to be worried about, you know, if I'm making this table, like the back side of the table could be ugly as sin as long as the front side looks good for the shot. Right. You know, um, that's not typically how they approach things, but the reality is like, yeah, I, I very much have to be concerned with what's being seen in camera so I can cheat, you know, with, with uh, uh, real-time visual uh, graphics. You can't. You know, everything has to be uh, made so that it can be seen from any angle, so that it can work, you know, if you're right up against the wall or a million miles away from it. You know, um, a lot of the things that you would do to, to cheat uh, a shot or to hide how you're uh, composing things are, aren't options. You know, you see these kinds of things with fighting games. Like, uh, if you've seen any of the breakdowns for the Dragon Ball Z fighting games. I actually haven't, no. Um, where somebody, some industrious fan of the of the series, will uh, hack the game in a way that they can pull the camera back, so oh. that you see these really impressive things where, like, you know, Goku's throwing a spirit bomb or you know uh, something like that, and they they really exaggerate the size of the hand, but they really exaggerate the size <laughs> of the hand to the point where it's like an inch away from the camera and it's six hundred percent larger. Oh wow! You know, and they completely. But it's just because the way the angle. Yeah. The... So they're they're actually treating it like it's it's film. a film or oh, cin wow. you know cinematic sequence, and so um, that's probably the biggest difference there. Um, the the other thing, of course, being that they tricks don't... illusions. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the other the other big difference is that they don't really have to be as concerned with um, optimization performance. You know, it's not happening in real time, so right. you take as much time as you want to render one frame. Yeah, you they know? literally have what I believe are called render farms, correct? Yeah, like where yeah. they just like ship it off. Yeah. Let it, you know, whole day to render one second, if even that, right? Wow. Yeah. Like something like that. Wow. Yeah. So what are some what are some common mistakes that you see people doing that coming in as artists or coming into the game industry that you would caution people against? Or if I mean if there's anything. Don't send me your resume without your friggin' portfolio link on it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Number one mistake. Um, no, uh, gosh. I mean, that one is valid. <laughs> you know, it, it should go without saying, uh, but breakdowns. Uh, when, you, when, when people put their work in their website um, and they just put the end product, I don't know if you made that cup on the table, if you made the whole room, if you just lit it, like knowing what their contribution was to that mm. scene. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, 15 screenshots, it could just be a small blurb or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but especially for um, more junior people coming in, like I want to see wireframes, I want to see texture sheets, I want to see your creative process, like seeing all, how you made it starting from the beginning so that I can see like, yes, this person has a good head on their shoulders. Because um, again, you can be a really good sculptor and not know a darn thing about how to make uh, a good game asset. Mm. So, I mean, that's that's really important to be able to see that someone has all those skills. Right. Yeah, because that's the biggest difference between someone who's just a good artist and someone who's a game developer. Oh, wow. Yeah. That kind of leads into my next question is what knowledge or skills do you think are really important for someone to have coming into a game studio or wanting to get into a game studio? Um, well, there's lots of, obviously, there's, there's tons of development skills, like uh, professional skills. Um, you know, obviously knowing uh, 3D as, uh, asset creation software, so Maya or Max. We're a Maya house, so, you know, 
that really doesn't matter. You could do Blender for all I care as long as you're good at it. Um, you know, obviously knowing the tools is one thing, but um, really game development's a collaborative process, right? So, you know, I need to be able to work with guys like Dom or guys like Dell, um, you know, without wanting to tear somebody's head off or, you know, uh, I need, to, I, I need to be a pleasant person to work with, you know. <laughs> um, so it does take a certain type of personality. Um, I think maintaining that passion, um, even when you kind of have to, when you know people are going to be critical of your work, yeah. you know. I think that's probably the hardest thing about being an artist in, in the creative industry in general is just this is not me painting stuff for my mom. You know, right. <laughs> this is this is I'm making a product for someone else. They have every right to tell me it's garbage, and I just have to accept that and fix it. Right. You know, um, and so just being very professional about that. Um, I don't know if that's quite the answer you were looking for, but no, uh, that's that that's good yeah, stuff. I mean, you it's know, definitely valid. Yeah, it's funny though that you were talking about the w really wanting to be in the game industry because um, that seems to be the one of the most common pieces of advice that everyone that has been in that chair says is, well, you have to really want it yeah. and you have to like games because it is such a rough, you know, layoffs are always one thing mentioned that's such a common thing in the industry, but also the really long hours, mm -hmm. you know, especially, you know, crunch time and stuff like that. Well, I think just from being online, like I, I browse Reddit a lot and like you see people comment all the time on various game stories about like, well, the devs don't know this, or why can't they do this, or it should just be easy to do this. And it's like, you guys know literally nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's not, and I'm surprised, because, like, I normally think, like, oh, people aren't going to be that much of a jerk. Because I never was, myself. And I'm not trying to, I guess that sounds really asshole -ish to say like that. But, I mean, it's just, like, <laughs> I always assume, like, oh, it's a hard thing. Like, I would never criticize the devs. I was just, like, bummed when a game didn't come out or, um, you know, like, was having issues, you know, whatever. But, like, for me to see now, it's like, oh, well, of course, why can't they just do this? They don't need microtransactions. They don't need to do this. And it's like, yeah. you have no idea what, how many people are involved in a decision, like, how something comes to fruition. Like, yeah, so many times on social yeah. media, there'll be a billion suggestions of how to fix something from people playing it. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, every single one of those don't work. Yeah. yeah. This is why, <laughs> this is why it's not fixed. And this yeah. is, like, and what cracks me up is, like, my favorite game right now is Company of Heroes 2. And like I'm still active on their subreddit, and they're always talking about like, well, why can't they just do this? Like it should be easy to just add this in. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like no, <laughs> like you guys. Oh, we like, didn't try that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> they just didn't think about it. It's just like, yeah. So I think that's still valid. Like it's not. It's literally not all fun in games. Yeah. Shocker. It's not <laughs> all fun in games in games. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it still is a job from time to time. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, I think the thing that, especially now, I, I've said so many times in my career, like, gosh, I, I wish I could have been around for the, like, Super Nintendo days, mm. you know, uh, when it was literally... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Is that, is that live? Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Dancing squirrels. Uh, um, I'm going to turn this way. <laughs> um, but I've said that because it, that was when it was just being an artist, you know. And mm -hmm. in pixel arts, it's its own separate thing, you know. Um, but there wasn't all the technical hurdles to get over. You didn't have to know Maya and ZBrush and yeah. Substance Painter and Designer and Unreal and know how to do shaders and, you know, be able to do all the optimization stuff. Like, the level of, of knowledge that you have to have, the barrier of entry is so incredibly high, yeah. you know. and these are things that, uh, you know, I've got two young kids at home. You know, I, I still have to be dad, but I, I still have to invest in myself as well. And stay on top of so whatever been the newest. So there's been a lot of after hours, you know, late nights, just investing in myself to make sure that I can be competitive. Right. Because, you know, younger, prettier is going to come in and be like, hey, I know all this stuff and I'm, you know. Right. You can give me a job for $40,000. And I'm like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you can give me a job for more than that. <laughs> yeah. I actually remember one of my professors at grad school, he used to work at Ensemble, mm -hmm. which was the studio behind Age of Empires. And he was actually with them for like AOE 2, that whole era, and Age of Mythologies. And then finally came time for AOE 3, which was the transition from 2D to 3D mm -hmm. for them. And so he was this old school guy. They were like, look, you either learn 3D or you're done. 
you know, and it's like, he's like, well, shit. Yeah, there's a <laughs> yeah. large learning curve. I'm always impressed in any department. Well, yeah. especially especially like art and engineer department uh, where there's so much knowledge in programs and technical mm -hmm. stuff. I'm always impressed when I see people that are older working in these positions because it obviously means that they probably spent a lot of time like you said, the YouTube University or, yeah. you know, going to classes on their own uh, way after they thought that they were done, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, like having to go back to school, having to stay up on this stuff. Um, so I'm always impressed because it's, yeah, it's one thing when you come right out of un university and it's all fresh and they just yeah. taught it to you because yeah. they're on top of it. Although, yeah. as you're finding, a lot of them aren't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the university. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's always impressive to me that when people stay up on it, mm -hmm. you know, on their own time, because um, you have to, because there's so much stuff, especially these days, things change so rapidly. Oh, it's insane. There's always something new. Like, yeah, my mom being an artist, she's always like, she, she never learned all that stuff. Like, she's still just a basic paintbrush and, and uh, canvas, and well, you know, she were, she's an Imagineer and works in the park, but it's all very, hand, literally hands, hands-on stuff. <laughs> And so she's, you know, she couldn't get hired for most jobs, even though her resume is like amazing and yeah. all this stuff. It's like, she no, do I don't one, know any one thing. She can turn on a computer and type an email, and that's like <laughs> end of list. End of list. That's where you get it from. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, she's way better than I, I am. Um, it's my dad that like he still has his flip phone. Oh wow! And um, that's just impressive. I'm thinking of going back. Sometimes I look at it longingly. I'm like, oh, I want the flip phone. <laughs> it was a nice, like, sturdy, yeah. yeah. Like, it felt very rewarding to open it each time. He'll call me if he gets lost because he doesn't have a map. You, <laughs> you have to have a hip hol holster for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if no, you're going to no. go flip phone, you have to go yeah. full nerd. Babe. That's what I'm going to do. I need an antenna. One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dad actually has one. Yeah. See, yeah. wait, yeah. you're like, ah, ha, ha. I'm not the your antenna, dad. not oh. the antenna. <laughs> But I don't know who has an antenna on their phone. I used to have one on my flip phone. Oh, on your flip phone, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want. I want to go back to the antenna flip phone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, who's seeing Star Trek what? Very Star Trek-ish. The... F Oh yeah. Oh, you wouldn't understand. I would not Dom, understand. Dom, like, hates all Star yeah. Trek. Yeah. <laughs> He draws a line in the sand for Star Wars and oh, Star come Trek. come on, man. Be an equal opportunity nerd. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. It's garbage. Um, <laughs> well, is there... Oh, my gosh. Now there's an owl. Um, <laughs> He's just so intimidating, too. <laughs> I, well, I saw this. I found these gifts. I said, they, um, he, like, eats his tail off coming up. The squirrel eats his tail? No, the owl eats the squirrel's tail. Oh. This Why did you ruin it for our viewers? <laughs> because I don't know if we're going to get to that point. Um, yeah, he, well, he's like, look at him. And he's taunting face. him. He's a brat. Yeah. Look. <laughs> <laughs> the internet yeah. is a weird and it magical is. place. It yeah. is. <laughs> the fact that someone produced this, though, is fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. We're all just staring at the background. Yeah, now. it's quite... It's quite. <laughs> <laughs> he's staring. See, a damn goes. owl. Oh, uh, right. And with that, <laughs> anything else you'd like to add? Um, I, I really, really enjoy uh, working in games. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I was thinking about what I was saying, and it sounded very gloom and doom, you know. <laughs> um, so I just want to qualify that with I really do enjoy working in games. And a lot of this sacrifice is because of that, mm, you know. Yeah. So um, I think that's the, that's the first and foremost thing. Like, you can, you can really... Um, as long as you can recognize that it's going to be a struggle. I mean, right. you know, anything worth doing in life is, is a little bit of a battle, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Damn it, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, don't do drugs at once. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, game development is, is, has been incredibly rewarding. And so I, I think that that's, that's what you really want people to understand so mm -hmm. yeah i just didn't want it to end on like <laughs> long hours yeah and <laughs> oh god and all these people work. don't know what they're doing when they try to get into the industry they're worthless oh there's so much knowledge you have to know it's all true but it is totally worth it i completely yeah. agree with that yeah i don't think anyone would be here if it weren't yeah exactly <laughs> very worth it
I know it's not squirrels. Uh, all right, yeah, oh, we're getting okay. into weirder, weirder <laughs> things on the horizon. Yeah, so um, anything that for next week or? Um, no, we have a surprise. <gasps> we're going to make it a surprise. Even I don't know. I forgot to check the <laughs> schedule. <laughs> <laughs> but we are going to be here next week. Um, and we'll be putting that out on our Twitter and Instagram and uh, Facebook. Yeah. So keep an eye on that for what next week's um, Twitch stream will entail. And hosts, yeah, will, will says, be on drugs. hosts will be on drugs. Yeah, we're escalating. We're going, this is not working anymore for yeah. the squirrels in the background. <laughs> Gotta upgrade. Um, no, we're not. We're just kidding. We're, yeah. Took kids. It's a jest. It's a jest. Yeah. Um, You're going to have pictures of, uh, of your trip, right? Oh, you know what? I oh, should do that. He's we'll been have in an Japan. hour long. Yeah, that's where yeah. I was at, by the we're way. We're just going to show, we're going to show Dom's Japan trip. Yeah. That's why he yawned during the uh, Yeah, I'm the so stream. sorry. I was he's like, jet lagged. Oh. <laughs> yeah, still getting used to it, fam. Um, uh, and oh. reminder, if you haven't signed up for the Drifters newsletter, go to Drifters game, driftersthegame.com. No, I think it's just driftersgame.com. That's true. It's driftersgame.com. All of our social media is under Drifters the, the game. game. Um, Classic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming yeah. on. Have James. a happy Easter, everyone who celebrates that. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. I forgot. That's yeah, this that weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to cook. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks, James. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.